Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the VOR cancellation, also called VOR suppression test. This is another special test within the oculomotor exam that is specific for a central vestibular deficit. Now, the VOR, or the vestibular ocular reflex, is a normal reflex that we all have, and in general, what it allows you to do is to maintain your gaze on an object as your head moves, whether it's to the horizontal directions or in the vertical directions. That is the VOR. It's also important to be able to cancel the VOR. So instead of maintaining my gaze focused on that, maybe I just want to rotate my head and cancel that VOR. And it's a complicated polysynaptic reflex that is performed mainly by the cerebellum, which we're not going to get into here. But if you have trouble canceling that reflex, you're probably gonna have dizziness when you're turning your head or if you're watching objects go by, particularly at a high rate. So for that reason, individuals who have motion sickness, especially in a car, if they're looking out a passenger window and watching cars go by and they get dizzy with that, it's very common that they have lost or they have impaired ability to cancel or suppress the VOR. And so you'll often find this test to be abnormal in those individuals. Without boring you any further, let's get into the VOR cancellation test. So, to perform the VOR cancellation test, the patient's going to be positioned in sitting, as you see right here, and the patient is instructed to interlock their fingers with their palms together with one thumb on top of the other throughout the duration of this test. Let's take a look at that right here. So, there is the hand position. So, fingers interlocked palms together, and then one thumb is on top of the other. Now, when you're in this position, you should only see one of your thumbnails. It's the one on the top. And so for the duration of the test, the patient is instructed to maintain their gaze fixed on that top thumbnail, okay? So right now I'm looking at my top thumbnail right there. Now there's two VOR cancellation tests. There's a horizontal one and a vertical one. We're gonna look at the horizontal one first. They're more or less performed the same way, just in different directions. So for the horizontal VOR cancellation test, the patient will rotate between negative 30 and positive 30, so 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right, at the spine, moving their head, neck, and arms as one unit. Okay, let's take a look at that right here. So this is the horizontal VOR cancellation test. Notice. All those things, my head, neck, arms, moving as one unit, and I'm keeping my gaze fixed on that top thumbnail, okay? Before we get into what constitutes an abnormal test, let's take a look at the vertical version, okay? So here's the vertical version, pretty much the same thing, except the patient's gonna hinge up and down at the hip and low back. Again, between negative 30 degrees and positive 30 degrees, so 30 degrees up and down, moving their head, neck, and arms as one unit. Take a look at that here. So same hand position, and again, I'm keeping my gaze fixed on that thumbnail on the top. So 30 degrees up, 30 degrees down, just like this. That is the vertical VOR cancellation test, okay? Now, for either of these tests, what constitutes an abnormal finding? Well, there's two big things here, okay? First of all, if the PT observes saccadic intrusions, nystagmus, and the patient reports having difficulty crossing the midline. So in the horizontal version, right here, crossing that midline, if they report there that they have a lot of difficulty maintaining focus on that thumbnail crossing the midline, or in the vertical version right here, crossing that midline, um, that is an abnormal finding. Now obviously to see saccadic intrusions and nystagmus, you have to be looking in the patient's eyes, and they're moving quite a bit. This is very difficult to do and it takes a lot of practice. And even a lot of times you're probably gonna miss it because it's very hard to see. So one of the things I rely on a lot is that if a patient reports that their thumbnail does not remain in focus, it blurs, it doubles, or they cannot keep up with the thumbnail, this is usually the finding that I end up relying on a little bit more. Now, if the thumbnail can't remain in focus, it's blurring, it's doubling, they can't keep up with it, that's going to be the case if they have saccadic intrusions or nystagmus, okay? So again, this is more of an indirect measure of that if it's hard to see these things in their eyes. But yeah, if they have difficulty keeping that thumbnail in focus, that constitutes an abnormal test. 
Now, more often than not, what you'll actually have is patients report dizziness and sometimes some symptoms consistent with that, like nausea, headache, lightheadedness, and they are not as specific as these two findings up here for a central vestibular deficit. However, if you perform a VOR cancellation test and your vestibular system is intact and healthy, this should not make you dizzy. It should not make you nauseous. It should not cause any problems. It should be asymptomatic. So if there is dizziness with this, it is important to know that. And assuming that the result of the VOR cancellation test lines up with some of the results of the other central test, then you can be more sure that you are dealing with a central vestibular deficit. But if the patient presents with any of these first two results here, these first two abnormal findings, you can be a lot more sure that you are in fact dealing with a central vestibular deficit and this is definitely an abnormal VOR cancellation test. So hopefully the VOR cancellation test now makes sense to you, you learned a lot. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.